The British are known for many things. Rock and roll, comedy, sci-fi, imperialism, and of course... Pardon me, would you have any grey poupon? Bespoke, luxury, and very expensive automobiles. And Aston Martin is perhaps the most desired of all these British brands because of this guy. Bond. James Bond. The longest lasting and most successful product placement in movie history has made Aston Martin the gentleman sports car. And unlike Ferrari or Lamborghini or even Porsche, an Aston Martin is the kind of car you can drive without hiding your face. On the supercar douchebag scale, Aston Martins tend to rank fairly low. And this means that people will actually talk to you at stoplights and in parking lots. The approachability is one of the best aspects of owning an Aston Martin. And I've owned two of them over the years. My first one was a 2009 V8 Vantage Roadster, and I currently own this 2014 Vanquish Volante. Additionally, for the last oh, seven or eight years, I've run the Aston Martin Owners Club for the entire South Central US. So I know a lot of people with these cars. And what we did is we got together and we created a guide, basically a list of things that we thought that people should be aware of before they purchase a used Aston Martin. Now, I'm gonna be talking about just the previous generation of cars. I'm talking about the cars made between, oh, about 2004 and 2016. These are known as the VH platform cars. The VH platform was Aston Martin's aluminum chassis. Uh, all of the previous generation cars were built on that, except for the 177, which was built on a carbon fiber chassis, and the Signet. But we won't talk about the Signet. But what we will talk about is the V8 and the V12 Vantage, the DB9 and the Virage, the DBS, the Rapide, and of course, the Vanquish. There are several resources that I would recommend you use to search for your perfect Aston Martin. And the first of which is Aston Martin's own website at preowned.astonmartin.com. This will give you a listing of almost every used Aston for sale at all the dealerships around the world. I recommend this as your first stop because it is always safest to buy a used Aston from an Aston dealership. For one, they've likely vetted the car. Cars that have major issues or have been red flagged by Aston Martin will generally not be accepted by dealerships for trade or consignment. Some of the pre-owned Astons are eligible for an extended warranty if you buy them from the dealer, and I'm gonna talk more on that later. Um, but also, the dealer will most likely know the original owner and they most likely did the maintenance on it. So they'll be able to tell you more about the history of the car and bring up any maintenance files on it. Another great resource is the DuPont Registry at dupontregistry.com. Many of the cars that come up in this listing will be the same cars that come up on Aston Martin's listing, but it will also include a lot of cars sold by private owners or sold by other car dealerships who got them as trade-ins. You can also look on eBay Motors at motors.ebay.com, which once again will have a lot of duplicates of the listings of the cars on the other sites, but it's still a good resource for locating pre-owned Astons. Regardless of whether you buy your Aston from an Aston Martin dealer or from somewhere else, please have it looked over by an authorized Aston Martin mechanic. I can't stress that enough. You might know some guy who's good with cars, but I can tell you he's not gonna have a clue what to look for in one of these. You really need to have somebody who knows these cars, look them over. Now it might cost you about $600 to take it to the dealership and have them do a proper full assessment on it. But believe me, it is money well spent. Generally speaking, and this is pretty obvious, it's best to find the youngest version of whatever car you're looking for. Of course, the price goes up quite a bit for each year of the model, but the younger the car is, the less likely you're going to run into issues. And even though the model may be the same, Aston Martin does tend to do major updates to the cars every three years or so. The last DB9 Volantes to come off the production line, for example, were a whole lot different than the DB9 Volantes that came off first. Generally speaking, Aston Martins are very reliable cars. Now, they're not like Lexuses where you're gonna drive 130,000 miles and absolutely nothing ever happens, but they're still very reliable. 
my old 2009 V8 Vantage Roadster, I had that five and a half years. I put about 22,000 miles on it, and during that time, absolutely nothing of any consequence ever went wrong with it. Now, the Vanquish here, on the other hand, well, it was a bit of an exception because when I bought this new, it had a ton of things wrong with it. But they were very unique to just this car because I know three other people with this car. And none of them had the problems I had. Luckily, all the problems were fixed under warranty. The car's been fine. Matter of fact, I trust it implicitly. It's never left me stranded on the side of the road. I've driven it on multiple cross-country road trips. As a matter of fact, uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, we did a 5,000-mile trip from Texas to Connecticut and back. And uh, we did that whole trip with a 9-liter bottle of champagne in the back. And the only thing that ever went wrong was I needed to replace one of the tires on the way home. Now, that being said, when something does go wrong with these cars, it can be quite expensive to fix it. For example, on the older Vanquish, the Vanquish that they made in the early 2000s, if you needed a replacement windshield for one of those cars, it might set you back thirteen dollars to $15,000. And that's assuming that you can even find the part. So you just have to remember that these are exotic automobiles. It's not a Toyota. When you buy a used one, you really need to mentally prepare yourself to spend maybe $10,000 over the next five years just in maintenance and keeping the thing going. <laughs> So first, I'm going to talk about just general things that apply to all of the old models. Things that you need to look for no matter which car you're interested in. Now, the number one thing, number one thing you need to look for is the condition of the leather and the trim. Aston Martins are notorious for not doing well in hot climates. The adhesives that Aston Martin uses just don't hold up well in heat. So it's quite common for trim to pop off and for leather to become delaminated or detached. Both of my Astons had this problem, and every Aston owner here in Texas knows that you never leave your car baking in the sun in the middle of the summer. So always ask, was this car parked outside in the middle of the summer? Where was it stored? I've got a friend who had a V8 Vantage, and he drove it as his daily driver every day to work. And that was here in Texas, and it was left outside uncovered. And after only a few years, well, the last time I saw his car, his entire dashboard was destroyed. It looked like somebody had attacked it with a razor blade. The leather was peeling up. It was split. It was a complete loss. It was really a disaster. Everybody here in Texas knows you just don't do that to these cars. If you do have to drive them uh, in the middle of the summer, park them under a tree, and for God's sake, crack a window so the inside doesn't get to 140 degrees. Now keep in mind that Aston Martins are built by hand. And as Jeremy Clarkson used to say, hand built is just another way of saying the door will fall off. And what that basically means is that these cars are going to have more inconsistencies in the panel gaps. They're going to have more squeaks and rattles than a robot built car. It's just part of the process. But sometimes these things can be more than is acceptable. For example, last year uh, there was a V12 Vantage S that was for sale and I took a look at it and it had an absolutely enormous, enormous gap in this area right here. It was between the A-pillar and the fender. It must have been a one-third inch gap. It was such a big gap you could actually see the frame of the car underneath it. And how that car passed inspection at the factory I will never know. But I guess when you're building cars by hand, your standards are maybe a little bit different. So anyway, when you look over the car, uh, be sure there are no gaps that are unacceptable, but just know that variances in the gaps are normal on these cars. And you might hear more squeaks and rattles than you would expect. These cars have very low clearance, and at one time or another, every Aston owner has bottomed out their car. So you always wanna get the car on a lift and have the underside inspected to be sure that there are no issues. I once bottomed out my Vantage so bad that it cracked an air intake box, which cost $450 to replace. All of the VH platform Astons came in a convertible variant. The Vantage had the Roadster, and all the other models had the Volante. These convertible mechanisms are very complicated. 
be sure that you can put the top down and back up several times without any alignment issues or strange noises. Also be sure to check both the headlights and the taillights. Now obviously check to make sure that they work, but also make sure that there's not excessive condensation in there. A little bit of condensation, some moisture that goes away when it heats up outside, that's probably normal. But if you see large droplets or standing water, that's probably a sign of a larger problem. Aston Martin paint jobs are considered, well, the best paint jobs in the entire automotive industry. It's a very time consuming process to paint these cars and as such, it's very expensive to have them repainted. A few years ago, a friend of mine needed to have his hood repainted and it cost him over $6,000 just for the hood. Now every car is going to have rock chips on the front. That's unavoidable. But what you're looking for when you inspect these cars are more serious problems with the paint. Look for uh, peeling paint, uh, large chips, and most importantly, make sure that you inspect the car in bright sunlight because then you're going to see if there's any swirls in the paint. Swirls happen when somebody does a bad job washing the car. If they use a dirty rag or maybe they buff the car uh, with a bad buffer, that can leave swirls all over the place. Uh, a few years ago, a friend of mine had his car detailed by a guy who did not know what he was doing. He used an electric buffer on the car and it absolutely demolished the clear coat. I mean, the car looked awful after the guy was done with it and he had to spend thousands of dollars uh, to get it all replaced. Another commonly reported issue with these cars is either a check engine light or a check emissions light. Um, oftentimes this is caused by something simple like just not having the gas cap on tight enough. But in rare cases, it can be a sign of a more serious issue with the fuel system. Sometimes it's an O2 sensor, sometimes it's a leak somewhere else. This car, when it was new, had a leak in the carbon filter and that had to be replaced. If it wasn't under warranty, it would have been a very expensive fix. So, Make sure that the firmware is up to date as well. Sometimes firmware in these cars can cause uh, emissions lights to come on. That's due to the difference between emissions requirements here in the US and abroad. So if you see a light on, make sure you know why it's on. Something that people have been reporting on the older VH platform cars is that sometimes the various pneumatic struts may fail and need replacing. Now, these are the struts that hold open the hood and the trunk and sometimes the doors. So, Open everything, make sure everything opens and that it stays open. When the warranties on these cars expire, a lot of owners will opt to have their annual maintenance done at places that are not the dealership. And that's fine most of the time because let's be honest, it costs thousand dollars a year to get your oil changes done at the dealership. It costs a fraction of that to take it elsewhere. And generally it's fine. A lot of people do it without any problems. But if you're buying a used car, ask where the maintenance was done and how often it was done because you want to make sure that the correct fluids were put in, the correct filters were put in, and that they were all done according to Aston Martin's maintenance schedule. Most of the VH platform Astons came with both a glass key and a plastic key, sometimes multiples of each. This car here came with two of these glass ones and two of the plastic valet keys. When you're buying a used car, make sure that you've got all of the keys and that all of them work because these keys are extremely expensive to replace. The last general tip that I'll give you is regarding mileage. Now you might be thinking fewer miles is better and usually that's right, but these cars like to be driven. If you see a car that's five years old and it's only got 1,000 miles on it, you might want to keep looking because it means that that car has probably been sitting idle for most of its life and that's just not good for these cars. My general rule of thumb is that an Aston should have about a thousand miles a year put on it. So when you see a five-year-old car, make sure it's got 5,000 miles on it or more. And also ask, say, was all of this mileage put on and once? Did they do one big road trip and then it sat in a garage for four more years? You really want to know the answer to that because an idle Aston is not a happy Aston. So now let's talk about the specific models starting with the Vantage, which was of all the VH platform cars, the most numerous and the most affordable. Now one thing to keep in mind is that every VH platform Vantage has a manual gearbox. It doesn't matter if it's a stick shift car 
or a sport shift car with the paddle shifters, it's still got a manual gearbox that has a clutch. And the clutches in the Vantage tend to need replacing every 20,000 to 30,000 miles. The clutch and mild V8 Vantage went out at exactly 20,000 miles. And back then it cost me, a, it was a little bit over $4,000 to have that clutch replaced. But these days what people are telling me is that it can cost $7,000 to $7,500 to have that clutch replaced. So, if you're looking to buy a used Vantage, be sure to ask, is this the original clutch? Has the clutch been replaced? If so, when? And that'll give you an idea of how much longer you've got on that clutch before you're going to have to shell out some pretty big bucks to have it replaced. Now, generally speaking, the transmissions in these cars have been reliable for most people. However, we have seen some issues pop up uh, here and there. They're generally very minor issues that people have. Sometimes they'll be driving along and they lose the ability to go into certain gears. We've seen this happen a few times. In each instance, it's been something very easily fixed, not a big deal. But when you're test driving the car, check every single gear. It should shift quickly. It should go right into that gear and stay in that gear. If it has problems going into the gear, uh, if it's very slow shifting or if it pops out of the gear, you might need a new clutch or it might just be one of these other minor, more easily fixed issues. Now, one final comment about the gearboxes is that I always recommend to people that they get a 2009 or later model year Vantage. And the reason is, is that the 2006s through 2008s, well, first of all, they had a smaller engine, 4.3 liter as opposed to 4.7 liter V8. But also, they have an older version of the Sport Shift uh, paddle shifters. Sport Shift 2, that's in the 09 and later, is a much better transmission. Additionally, if you can afford it, get a 2010 Vantage S or later because those have the seven speeds. So one last thing to know about the Vantage. Sometimes the gas flap won't open. Now this is a problem that pretty much every Vantage owner has had happen to them at least once. It happened to me on two separate occasions. So on two occasions they had to fix this. But there's a little spring in there. Sometimes it just goes out. I'm not sure exactly what happens, but the gas flap won't open. So when you're inspecting the car, just be sure that the gas flap opens correctly. As far as the DB9, uh, the Virage, the DBS, and the Rapide go, well, there really isn't a whole lot to look for in those because we really haven't seen any common problems develop with those cars. Really, all you have to look for are the general things that I mentioned earlier, the things like the leather and the trim. Most of those cars came with regular automatic transmissions, so there's no clutch that needs replacing. There are a handful of the stick shift variants out there, and those will need the clutches replaced, but the ones with the automatic transmissions, incredibly reliable cars. We just don't see any commonality with things going wrong with them, so there's really nothing special to look out for. Now, that being said, I will recommend that if you can, get a DB9 GT. The last DB9 I drove was a 2015 DB9 GT, and by 2015, the DB9 was basically a Vanquish, and it drove incredibly. With the Rapide, if you can afford it, get the Rapide S. The extra horsepower is well worth it, and that car is easily the prettiest four-door performance car ever made, and they're the rarest VH platform Aston to find on the used car market. As far as the Vanquish goes, there's really only one additional thing to look out for, and it was a problem that existed on just the 2012 through 2014 model year cars. The problem was with the buttons, the PRND buttons that control your park, reverse, neutral, and drive. There was an issue with these cars where sometimes on some people's cars, you'd press one of those buttons and it would cause the entire button assembly to collapse into the dashboard. They didn't do a recall for some reason, they just waited for people's cars to exhibit this problem and then they would fix it. This car never had that problem, so it was never repaired. And because there was never a recall, it means that if it does happen, it's up to you to pay to have it fixed. So, if you're looking at getting one of these cars, make sure to just press all the buttons, make sure that they're solid and that they don't go in. Um, the only other recommendation that I'll make on the Vanquish is that I highly recommend you get a 2015 or later car. Get a Vanquish S if you can, because that thing's awesome. But 2015 or later, and the reason is, is that the earlier model cars 
well, it had a, let's just say, less than excellent six-speed transmission in it. That's what this one has. Never been very happy with the six-speed in this. They put an eight-speed in the 2015 and later models. And believe me, that eight-speed makes all the difference in the world. Shaved off a huge amount of zero to 60 time, better gas mileage, and the car just simply drives a whole lot better. So if you can afford it, 2015 or later on the Vanquish. The last thing I'm going to talk about is the warranty. Now, if you buy an Aston Martin new, it comes with a three-year unlimited mileage warranty. You also have the option of buying one or two additional years. Now, if you buy the extended warranty when you buy the car, it's one price. You also have the option of buying the extended warranty later during your initial warranty period, but it'll cost you a little bit more. Now, if you're buying a used Aston and the warranty's already run out, if you bought it from an Aston Martin dealership, you might still have the option of getting one or two years of warranty for the car, but it's going to cost you an absolute fortune. Uh, for example, uh, a week ago, a friend of mine bought a 2015 V12 Vantage S, and he told me that the first year, one year of warranty on that car was going to cost $6,900. To get the two-year warranty, $9,000. Well, I told him, don't do that. Just self-insure. The car only had a little bit over 5,000 miles on it, so the odds of something going wrong with the car that costs more than $9,000 and is something that the extended warranty covers, pretty slim odds there. Most people do not get the extended warranty. It really just doesn't make financial sense. It's not a good bet. Don't do it. So, in conclusion, Aston Martins, great cars. The used market is fantastic right now. You can get some really great deals. If you're going to get one, do your due diligence. Check the paint, check the leather, check the trim, make sure everything opens and closes correctly. Just look it over. It's all common sense stuff. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Also, we've got a written version of this guide that's on our Aston Martin owner's website at amoctexas.org. And our members will be updating this list over time as we learn uh, new things about how the VH platform Astons are aging. So check there to see what the latest information is. Anyway, as always, thank you for watching. See you next time.